we're going to try and whistle through this because I we are conscious that some people may need to leave um, because of childcare. And if anybody does need to go, we're not going to take offence. Um, so please, you know, if you do have uh, childcare issues, don't leave your children stranded. Do go and pick them up. Um, so I'm, I'm going to deal with uh, EHC appeals, and then we're going to do a very quick mock tribunal. But it's really because a mock tri a tribunal takes all day, and we're going to sort of only have a limited time so that people can get off and, and pick up the, their children. So. Um, We've talked a bit all morning about uh, if uh, the um, uh, um, local authority, you can go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards uh, with uh, the EHC plans, really there comes a point um, where you need to say, just issue the final one uh, so that I can have my right of appeal. Now, you can appeal against a number of issues. One is if the local authority decide not to carry out an EHC needs assessment. We spoke about the needs assessment this morning and um, local authorities will usually, part of their gut reaction, um, if you put your hand on a very hot plate, your hand comes off, it's the automatic reaction. The local authority's reaction when you ask for an EHC assessment is rather the same. They say, no, sorry, you haven't got um, uh, you haven't got this or that, or you haven't got the evidence, they will always refuse, so don't be put off. Just say, fine, thanks very much, and lodge an appeal, because then they'll do it. Um, should they not do it immediately, um, the, 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 the uh, request, because the tribunal service worked out that actually what was happening with uh, appeals against refusal to carry out um, a needs assessment was that they were all conceded or all con successful, they now do it on the papers only. So you don't need to attend a tribunal. You send in your written evidence and the tribunal uh, panel will sit one day in a room with a cup of coffee and a gin and tonic and they will look at the papers and they will make a decision. And the decision will be um, pretty much or likely to be carry out in these assessment because what we said this morning the threshold is so low so don't be uh, if you refuse an EHC assessment lodge your appeal straight away and then they'll carry it out what you could also appeal against is the local authority might um, uh, having been forced to carry out the EHC assessment might then say actually we've carried it out and we don't think um, uh, Jemima needs an EHC plan because um, all of uh, Jemima's needs can be met in the school um, and the fact she's non-verbal we're just going to wave at her and we know she's not toilet trained but we think that will come in time and um, I know she's got some, imme some mobility issues but um, don't worry we've got trolley. Um, the, the, the um, Again, you can lodge an appeal against that, and if your child has special educational needs, again, that's likely to be conceded. We've had one w local authority who's going to remain nameless, but uh, it's not far from here, and it's called Somerset, um, <laughs> which in one case said, um, we've carried out an assessment, and we're going to issue a non-statutory EHC plan. Well, there is no such thing. So they, 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 they drafted this EHC plan, which was useless, obviously, um, but they called it non-statutory. So we went to <coughs> appeal against that one, and obviously they were then ordered to um, uh, issue they eight... Gave in, they, they gave in, actually. They gave in, yeah. Oh, is it more Somerset? Yeah. Oh, I'm... Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I was... <laughs> yeah, I was they, they, they gave in once we lodged the appeal, um, because <coughs> that, that was... Um, so then you come on to the usual appeals. Most appeals are either B, F or I, or the British film industry, as Liz said this morning. So B is where the needs aren't um, uh, fully described. F is provision, I is school. Why is B really important? Because if you want a provision over here, you have to have the need in B. So we will often spend quite some time making <coughs> sure B is really detailed. The child has um, difficulties with social communication, for example. So you need speech and language therapy. The child has sensory issues in B, so you need occupational therapy over here. You can't 
the idea of BNF is they're meant to be a mirror. So you could list all the needs on one side of the page and on the other side is the provision. So if you're after a certain provision, you've got to make sure you've got your need. So what sometimes happens is the local authority will say, okay, we recognize that the child has significant speech and language difficulties, they're non-verbal, so that, that they were quick on the draw there, weren't they? Um, the, that you then, um, they then say, oh, they don't need any speech and language therapy because uh, I've had the one where they, the local authority said, well, we don't think they're going to make any progress or we think they've reached as far as they're going to or some, some such thing. Um, a tribunal will always say, clearly identified need in B, where's your provision? And uh, the, the, so, so remember that the, the mirror and provision. So spend some time on B. Identify each and every difficulty. Um, it could be that the child um, has uh, difficulties with fine motor skills. That's going to affect them uh, when they're with all sorts of activities. But make sure that's in B because then they get the OT in F. It could be that they need some. Um, what about aware, aware, lack of awareness of danger? Can that be a need? Yeah. 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 So, so they need to say uh, unaware of danger yeah. in um, B um, environment outside yeah. Yeah. the home. So they need some 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 training in, 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 in danger awareness and travel. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I we've dealt with I you and I is is the school placement and you, you um, I won't dwell on that. We've already discussed some of that. Um, you can ask a local authority to reassess if they refuse. Again, you can lodge an appeal. Um, the other one, and it doesn't come up very much, is uh, cease to maintain. Um, occasionally, if a child does make such progress that they no longer require an EHCP, a local authority can just say cease to maintain. Remember, if you're at an annual review, and this is a nice new, new fairly new provision or requirement that we like a lot, um, if you're at an annual review and you want an amendment to your EHCP because you think, actually, this EHCP isn't as quantified and specified um, as I thought, you know, as, as I realise it should be now, so I'd like amendments, please, um, the local authority might say, well, there's, there's no change. Um, and you can say, well, there is, I'm better informed. And I know that what you're doing is, um, is unlawful, so I, want, um, I want, will want an amendment. If after that annual review, four weeks later, they say, we've looked at the paperwork and we're not going to make any amendments, then you can appeal that. So I have a question about the cease to maintain, which does really come into play with children with autism. Because children with autism don't actually get better. They just manage their autism with the sca invisible scaffolding in which this yeah. is part yeah. of. So countless times, schools will put in the support that is funded on the EHC. The child will be less anxious. They will learn better. And then they take it away. So it's like giving a child glasses, saying, oh, now they can see. Let's take the glasses mm -hmm. away. So that's happening time and time again. So is there any way to put that into the EHC plan in the first instance, a statement that this child has autism, that there really could never, there really is no reason for a child with autism to have their EHC, EHC plan stopped. No, was the answer no. to that. No, no because um, children change, their needs change. They should do, but, but, but children yes. with autism, you, you have to, if you the, get the scaffolding right, yeah. the scaffolding, even if a child isn't utilizing that scaffolding, if you remove it with different over time, mm -hmm. with different pressures, with different things, they, they always will come back to needing those pontoons under them. But basically, the, the parents have to appeal the so, cease to maintain. Right. There's countless times where children with autism are given workstations, that works, they calm down, they do really well, and then all of a sudden we get, oh, they, they, they don't need it anymore. It's taken away. We, and do, then, uh, we don't often see, we don't see many cease to maintain, no. do we? Okay, so, well, but parents aren't appealing it then. But, yeah, but yeah. there is undulation. Uh, in fact, I think I can only. Oh, I don't know, the last one I used, I only dealt with one cease to maintain. Right, well, I. I, I all right, well. So I. I some more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I can only think of that one. I, I know the one. Yeah. 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 Um, I think also the thing to remember is this, if they do cease to maintain, mm -hmm. they have to maintain the provision in the plan until the appeal has been heard. Right. So they can't go. Here's your letter cease to maintain 1st of July, and then you have to wait six months for mm. your appeal to be heard. They have to maintain the provision 
um, until the appeal is heard so and a decision made. I think what's happening is schools are ceasing to meet. Schools are saying that child doesn't need that and removing it and then putting it back and then removing it. And then they can't it do that. The only person who can change the plans is local authority. <laughs> schools okay. can't make that decision. Maybe. Schools can't make that decision right. at all. Okay, that's interesting. So that, that's what yeah. I will advise yeah. parents yeah. in the future. Yeah. No, I mean it is happening. It is happening. The schools can't. The schools can't do that. You should say to local authority. My school, this school, um, you can write to the governors as well. But, but the, the local authority has the duty to maintain that EHCP. The schools can't remove. Okay. It's only the local authority. Um, something that happens in Cornwall. We don't well, well the other thing that happens in Cornwall, Cornwall is that um, a child can have a TA in their EHC cup thing for a particular number of hours, and many, many of our schools are, are pooling those TA mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. and putting one TA in a class mm -hmm. so the child doesn't have a one to one TA. They're, they're getting sure, their hours, but they're putting them in a class and the kids are sharing them. That's a lawful thing. That's happens, happens, That's widespread. That happens all the time. It's widespread. 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 They not, the child, so, so that literally. The, then what you need to do, the, the, what you need to do is because it's in the, if it's in the plan, they'll have um, 10 hours a week of one to one. Um, then you need to be writing to the school saying, please identify which lessons that, that one to one is in. Um, please yeah. identify the TA. And mm -hmm. then, if if you think that, that it is pooling and not one, oh, we one, know it's pooling, right? Then then mm -hmm. you need to write to the local authority, right? And it could be that um, you're writing what's called a letter before action that they're in breach of their statutory duty and not providing the ten hours one to one. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the issues. So no schools can pull TA hours. They can't. They can't make any changes to what's in the plan. Then, then, okay. then parents need to write to the to the governor okay. who is responsible for SEN, and they need to write to the local authority because the local authority, at the end of the day, has the statutory duty. Right. They're in breach of statutory duty. That's it's absolutely just, right, but that's as a commonplace yeah. in court. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. See, in my son's special needs school, we get told all the time, "Well, we don't need this in the plan yeah. because." All, all the kids need this, so we just do it as standard. It's 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 it it is different if it's a special needs mm -hmm. school because you won't get. Um, it, 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 usually, you have much smaller classes, mm -hmm. and you, in a special school, you often will not get uh, ten hours one to one because you'll have a, a classroom of say eight. You'll have a teacher and four TAs that are spread amongst it, so it is different. We don't get any one to one anyway, but. My point is, in, in the class, and it is a small class, there's only eight in there. Yeah. All the children have got special needs, it's a special yeah. needs school, but they've all got individual needs. Mm -hmm. You've got some yeah. that can't feed that are in a wheelchair, you've got some like mine that are jumping off the walls and running around, and mm. there's nothing structured in our plan for our son. Even things with reading, we get to, oh, well, it's, it's a special school, we do all this anyway, yeah. we don't need it in the plan. And, mm. There, there, there should even, because the, the, the one-to-one obviously isn't necessarily yeah. going to apply with a special school, but quite often parents will be told that because it's um, a plan for a special school that they, they go down the road, oh, well, we need to be more flexible. Um, and that's not the case. There should still be specific provisions. So although yeah. he's in a class with other children who have special educational needs, he needs specific one-to-one -one work. When we met with the EH writer, they, um, they actually said that we didn't plan then you need to look at part B get that amended at the end get of the, the, get the amended. Did you have a question? Yeah, so we got a specialist provision um, from the two to one. Yeah, we've been told two to one, but when we spoke to this, they said no, nobody gets two to one um, because it's a specialist provision, so you don't get two to one. And that, that's one of our concerns about sending them there, that we need two to one. It has says, and if you actually said, if you managed to get it into the EHCP... Yeah. Then it has to be provided. If it's in the EHCP... Okay, it's even though they say, well, it's specialist, it's, we, we no. we're from specialist school, we don't know yeah. if it gets you to no. it. It is a statutory document. Okay. My concern is a bit of a because it's a bit of a It doesn't say after time or number of hours, yeah, so yeah. which we need to tie it down to. It says in order to meet the solicitor's needs. Because you've got an annual review possibly pending. Yeah. 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 So you, 
yeah, that's the place to address it and make sure because if you're also because they may look at taking it out if he's that's going what I was about to say. If we start saying in, we want number of hours, are they going to go? We'll take it out, or do we just go? Let's just ignore no, that. No, I think the, if attention. they're going to take it out, they're going to take it out. But if you're moving to a specialist provision, they may look at taking it out anyway. Um, on the argument that it's a special school, smaller class sizes, but. It's, you may then just know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not saying that a ratio of less than. So sometimes you can have a ratio of um, all times. It has to be a ratio of one adult to two children, or one adult to four children. Now, is it an independent school? You can specify. Mm -hmm. yes. If it's a Three Bridges Independent School, we, we have children on four to one, two to one, one to one. We were told so, only of the same schools. Uh, it says to anyone you don't get it. Right. Well, it's an. In Three Bridges is an independent school, but by all means, use it as a comparison blackboard if it's from a loving class. And there are, there use are it, use it as a comparison. Use yeah. it as a comparison because in Cornwall, if a child three 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 bridges. is an independent autism school, and if a child needs two to one, they get two to one, or three to one, they get it. The start, they, yeah, the yeah. starting point has to be what the child needs, yes. not what the environment is, yeah. or what the environment can offer that child. But there are there are other maintained special schools mm -hmm. where we have pupils who have two to one, three yeah. to one. <coughs> Cornwall, but in other local authorities, yeah. Yeah. depends on the child's yeah. needs. Yeah. Comes back yeah. to making sure all the needs are in B, so you get that provision in F. And the child, it's not only about education, it's about child safety and the yeah. safety of yeah. the children. Yeah. 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 And make sure you have your risk assessment so that that's been done as well. So, what is a small group assessment in a school environment? Yes, yeah. small groups, um, yeah. a small group of four or less would be much better than just. A small group. Yeah, because small your idea of a small group might be more different to mine. Exactly. Yeah. So usually, um, small groups um, we wouldn't want to in a plan. We would want to say should be taught in uh, class sizes of not more than eight, not more than ten, not more than four, not more than. Um, and then if he's going to go, or Jemima is going to have um, specialist small uh, group activities, um, classes, specific yeah. maths for tuition no more than four or no more than three or no more than two so um you know you need to have um and it needs to say and it need you can't you can't sort of say that that small group of uh no more than four mass is regular it's got to be um, daily, so many every day or every activity it's got to be um who said that yeah, <laughs> I was trying to slip that in. <laughs> I was too busy listening to what you were saying. I've given up. I thought, oh, I've got this to inform. I wasn't paying any attention whatsoever. <laughs> well done. Okay, bingo. Um, so, yes, it, it needs to say that the... the uh, Small group of no more than four must be twice a week, once a week, once a fortnight, once a month, once a term, whatever. But uh, regular is, is not to be seen in that EHC plan. And I can say regular again now. Um, <laughs> but it, it has to be um, quantified and specified to the extent that it's absolutely, you can pin a local authority down. So if they don't provide it, you can say they're in breach of their statutory duty. Because if it was just um, regular small groups, what the hell does that mean? Does that mean <laughs> that's, that's what's in my exactly. well, that's I'm, I'm thinking you're out of No, 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 good, no good whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's it be <laughs> Sorry? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, there, there, there is. There, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a very good resort. S E A. Okay, um, if you want to appeal, you need to do it within two months of the date of the letter. So it's got to be, um, uh, if your letter is dated the 1st of September um, 2017, by the 1st of November, you've got to have appealed. So get your appeal in in October. Don't waste... Yeah. So that's the letter that's sent. The letter that says confirmed. This is yes. the plan. Yeah, this is the plan that you're appealing, or the, we're not going to carry out the statutory assessment, or we're refusing to um, amend the plan. What happens if they just don't respond to you? Then what you have to do, you have to send a sort of, you know, I will bring. You have to, in, in essence, <coughs> that is a problem. Um, if you haven't got your final EHC plan. 
then you, you need to be complaining to the local authority um, and saying that you, oh, I guess you could, could threaten that you're going to bring a judicial review proceedings for their failure to carry out their statutory duty to issue the plan. Because the problem is until you get the plan, you can't get your appeal to, to a special needs tribunal. And local authorities will delay sending the plan um, or issuing the plan rather because then it avoids the delay. Um, so it is two months from the date of the letter, and if it's taken a week and a bit to get to you, just play safe and get it in before the two months of that letter, okay? Um, you need a mediation certificate, so what you have to do is ring up a mediation company and say, I'd like a mediation certificate, I don't want to go to mediation with this local authority because it's a complete enough waste of time, I don't want to waste any more time, I just want to lodge my appeal, because that's the only way I'm going to get anywhere. Um, once you've got your mediation certificate, you can then um, lodge your appeal. Is that a physical piece of paper you have in your it's hand? It's an email. Yeah. It's an email. Because I mean, I've been told verbally I've got a mediation certificate. No, no, no. no you've you got to have a written one. Because yeah. you don't have to submit it when you lodge your appeal. You, yeah, you so I need paper. to physically get back to them and yes. say I haven't so got a mediation certificate. Yeah. It's an email. It's an email. It's very. And they have to send it to you within three working days. The mediation company. And, and to be honest, most mediation companies, you ring them up and say, I need a mediation certificate for an appeal, can you give it for today? And I, sometimes parents come to us and it's the day they've got to lodge the appeal because they've thought, shall I do this, shan't I? And we've got the mediation certificate that day. Or sometimes, don't delay, we've just sent the appeal and said mediation certificate to follow so that we get the appeal and we don't want to be out of time. Um, if you are out of time, you can request that your appeal is lodged out of time in special circumstances, but it's really throwing yourself in the mercy of a tribunal, someone who you don't want to, they're not going to show mercy to anybody. So you, it's better, you know, again, if you take one thing out, try and get your appeal in before the two months. Don't, you know. What is a mediation certificate? It's a big, you ring up a media, when you have your letter from the local authority saying, I'm, we're, not, we're not going to amend your EHC plan, or here's your final EHC plan, uh, or we're not going to carry out this letter. Well, you have a letter from the local authority, and in it it will say you have a right of appeal, um, and um, it will also mention a mediation company. Um, and you, ju you just ring up the mediation company and say, can I have the mediation certificate, please? Okay. Um, preparing your appeal. When you send in an appeal, um, the initial appeal, don't have sleepless nights over it. Just get the broad grounds in straight away as to why you want your appeal. Get the points there. You can you can write your novel later, but because um, there's lots likely to be lots of reasons why you, you're lodging that appeal. Just get the broad grounds in. I'm appealing against <coughs> these because it hasn't said all of Jemima's needs. I want to appeal it, and these are the broad headings that's not mentioned. I'm appealing against I because it's non-specific, non-quantified. I don't know what my child's going to have. That's I. I would like to see um, speech and language once a week in 40 minutes with a <coughs> speech and language therapist. I want occupational therapy once a week, 40 minutes. I want my child um, to have regular physiotherapy. I want physiotherapy for uh, w once a term. Um, and if it's I, like the school I want is this. So, so just get that appeal in. Um, if you um, do have an appeal, um, the local and it goes to appeal, and many, many <coughs> cases do not actually go to an appeal. Local authorities um, <coughs> will often wait until the day before a tribunal, before mm -hmm. conceding, or a week before. They'll mm -hmm. take it to the wire. Um, now, some of you uh, may have heard of the one, well, of the um, amusing case of um, Baker Small. Now, Baker Small were a firm of solicitors who, frankly, give solicitors a bad name, who um, were used by a lot of local authorities. So they um, acted for a number of local authorities across the country. And for those of you who don't know the story, um, they were on Twitter and they took great joy and delight. There's a point to the story, by the way, and I'll get into it in a minute. Um, they took great joy and delight in defeating parents and um, uh, beating parents in not getting provision they wanted. In particular, local authorities seemed to spend thousands on employing them um, so that um, to defeat parents who wanted ABA in a plan. And ABA? A, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a specific it's program, specific for, autistic program for autistic so children. Uh, sort of applied applied behaviour uh, um, analysis. analysis. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. 
as I say, uh, sorry. So, um, and on a Friday night, perhaps after one too many G and Ts or glasses of wine, the Twitter account said, "Oh, um, had a great result today against a parent, um, a smiley face or something, um, defeated them on their ABA." And some parent then tweeted back, well, I don't know if that's you know, a very nice thing to say. So then they tweeted a picture of a swimming pool and various bottles of champagne and said, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying tonight or something. And then somebody, another parent tweeted back saying, well, I don't know why you're taking such joy in this, to which they then had um, a picture of a pussycat laughing and said, oh, my cat, you know, I'm laughing as much as my cat. And the whole thing escalated. So th this, th well, this was a Friday night. They were used by a large number of local authorities who employed them on a retainer, employed them to do training, and employed them to do tribunals. Mm. And this was Friday night. Um, by Saturday night, the Twitter account was saying that um, it was an employee who had gone rogue. By Sunday night, they had apologised and admitted it wasn't an employee gone rogue. It was the, the main partner. By Monday morning, it was in the Law Society's Gazette, which isn't the, doesn't have the widest circulation, but by Tuesday, it was picked up by, because the Mail and the Mirror looked at the Law Society's Gazette for unusual stories, so it was in all of the t lost number of tabloids. Um, by Wednesday, a number of parents were writing to local authorities where it was then became known that they were being used, saying, I hope you ended your contract with Baker Small. And certainly by Friday, so that's only a week later, they had lost contracts worth about a million pounds. So um, the, 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 there's several morals to this story. One is be careful what you do on social media because you will be found out. Two, don't go on social media when you're drunk. Um, three, if you do, make sure you're honest. But the reason I started on the story of Baker Small is they were employed by a lot of local authorities to really, really defend hard any cases brought by parents. Um, in particular the ABA, which, which Liz specialises in. But they would, literally, it was, it was bizarre, they would take even a case which I would say there is no way in the world these parents are going to lose, to a tribunal. In the morning of the tribunal, they would say, OK, we'll give in. Um, so if Baker Small were involved, we always knew, A, the case would last a long time, and it would go to the tribunal, and they would also make it very difficult for parents. They were very aggressive in their questioning, um, and uh, asking lots of questions of parents, making life very difficult. Now, they lost a lot of contracts, and a lot of local authorities are no longer using Baker Small. Um, but the, the, the problem is, is that if, if you have a local authority who has that attitude, they can take it to the wire with no consequences. Because if you appeal to a tribunal, um, even, except in very rare circumstances, you will not get any of your costs or if you, legal costs or anything against the local authority. The local authority can behave completely unreasonable and you will not get those costs back. I think, how many of you? Three or four? Five. Okay. So in fifth, 20, well, I've never, I, I'll be quite honest, I've never, I don't think I've ever got costs against the local authority in 20 years. And Liz has managed it in five times. In, um, so <laughs> hats off to Liz. But what I'm saying is that you know, it's really unusual to get costs against a local authority, even if they're utterly unusual. And it's within the, and I, I often, I might could be wrong, but in cases where you're looking for a really expensive placement, the local authority have no case. Suddenly on the morning of the tribunal, they wake up, they've got no case, they agree to it. You have the tribunal, they've then got 28 days to um, bring out the new plan. Um, and then you've got a bit more time before the child starts school. So with worst case scenario, it's an expensive placement. They've saved themselves a lot of money, haven't they, by delaying when putting in that plan. And I think that, that my, my view is that that may be what some local authorities are doing to simply delay the process so they don't have to spend the money. Um, if it does go to a tribunal, um, you, it is a long day. And so if you have childcare responsibilities, you need to make arrangements. You usually need to be a tribunal by nine and it may not finish till five, six, seven. In years gone by, tribunals used to be held in hotels local to where the parents lived and um, I have actually been at tribunal at um, half past nine at night because it started in the morning and they would go through until you finished. Now they tend to be held in courts or um, uh, tribunal buildings and they usually will finish by six o'clock. But you, know, you need to just be aware of that. Um, if you have independent reports, then and, and for example, if you have an independent speech and language therapy report, 
Um, and you want speech and language therapy in your um, uh, plan, then, and you've got that independent report, and the local authority are refusing it, then usually you want that person to come to the tribunal, but you will have to pay for that independent person to come to the tribunal. If you have an independent educational psychologist who says that the school being offered by the local authority cannot meet needs, but the school that the parents want can meet needs, that educational psychologist will need to come to the tribunal. If you want an independent school, um, independent special school, um, or an independent school, um, then somebody from that school needs to come to the tribunal because the tribunal will want to hear from that school about what they can offer. And just dwelling on that, there's something we haven't mentioned is, if you have a child who um, is in a mainstream school and to be in a mainstream school needs one-to-one full-time, 32, that can take the cost about £20,000 on average. So if you add things up, I'm just picking a figure here. If you have a small independent mainstream school where the class sizes are no more than about 12 and the school fees are about 12,000, 15,000, it is cheaper for, for Jemima to go there and the local authority, you can get them to pay it. So we've dealt with quite a few schools where the child in a mainstream school would need one-to-one -one full time, but if they were in a mainstream independent school where fees are paid, um, would not need that one-to-one, -one. we've got the local authority to pay the fees of that mainstream. So again, that's something that might be um, of relevance to some parents. If you lose at a tribunal, you can only appeal on a point of law, not because you don't like the tribunal judge or the decision. <laughs> um, it has to be on a point of law. Um, so that those are more tricky to deal with. Um, how am I of time? Um, how much is the average cost of going to a tribunal? It does vary depending on what the issues are. And generally you're saying that parents have to that out before yeah. if you go to tribunal so if you appeal and it goes to tribunal do the parents who are taking whatever kind yeah. of uh, mm -hmm. country to the court have to pay for those fees but the fees that's what stops a lot of parents is the financial implication yes um it, i mean it depends on the if you go to tribunal you can do it yourself you the, the reality with special needs work is you probably, or special needs tribunals, you often need to pay for independent reports. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're looking for, um, let's just say you're looking for an independent special school um, or an independent school, um, the, then the fees are £12,000. If, you, if you, you're successful at tribunal, then you pay nothing. And so if you're a parent who um, is able through family and friends to pay the fees for, say, um, a certain period of time, then... No, I'm talking about actually taking somebody to a tribunal. Does it cost parents yeah. to actually no. initiate the process? No, no, no. 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 It's, no. A, it's, a free, it's a free process. Um, yeah, so it's not going to impinge any parent, no matter what their financial implications are. Well, if, you, if you then need to get independent assessments, then you might need to Yeah, pay. but to actually, for you as a parent, just to go to the tribunal and you, if you went on your own, no witnesses, no representation, yeah. that, that, that is all free. Right. That, that's, so it's yeah. open to, what I'm trying to say is it's open to anybody, no matter what your financial yeah. background is. So the yeah. legal help and the, the bringing the, mm. the independent advice will cost you. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem, and mm. the reality is is that the special needs process is very legalistic, and it is a minefield. Um, is that where you might be, um, you might be the the mm. Well, unfortunately, legal le yes, legal aid following March 2013, that's spoke um, and um, until that date, a huge part of the work we did was legal aid. Um, legal aid is no longer available other than there is a telephone advice line um, where you can, if you are financially eligible, which means you have to be financially eligible um, in income and capital, so there's, there's qualifications, so if you're in receipt of um, welfare benefits or on a low income and you have no capital or your capital is below a certain threshold, um, you may qualify for free advice from this telephone um, advice line. 
Um, but that's just a thing. It doesn't, and it doesn't include representation at hearings or witnesses. So you would still be looking at, at paying for that. It might pay it's, if you're eligible. It can pay for the independent assessments. It can pay, yeah, it can pay for the independent assessments, assessments but it yeah. won't pay for those independent uh, uh, experts to attend the tribunal. So, so yeah. So, so, so it's, it's limited. It's, you can pay if you're successful. You just yeah. So that's that, why probably things hardly ever get to tribunal because most parents yeah. of disabled children often are financially lower than the scale in earnings, therefore they can't afford to go to tribunal. That's what I was trying to get at yeah. is that yeah. there is an implication to parents taking things yeah. to yes. tribunal. Yeah. And actually for most families about disabled children, often their income has been affected by having some yes. yes, 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 yes. they can't afford Absolutely. to go to tribunal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you represent yourself. Unless you yeah. represent yourself. And you get eaten alive. Yeah. yeah. Yes, they do use. Yeah, because yeah. 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 the local local authority is allowed to bring up. Are you so you don't need to write independent reports and things? Are you directed to get paid, or is that just your choice? No, your choice. But it depends on. It's very difficult to make generalisations because it depends on 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 the issues. So I'm just going to take a, an example. You have a child who's aged uh, 13 who uh, you believe is uh, severely dyslexic and has made very little progress in acquiring literacy skills in mainstream school to date. Um, you want your child to attend a residential. Um, independent special school for children who have a diagnosis of dyslexia. Um, you um, are going to go nowhere unless you have an independent educational psychologist report which A supports your diagnosis of severe dyslexia and B supports that residential placement and C says that the mainstream education provided today is not meeting needs and more of the same is not going to work. So it does depend on the circumstances of each case. So, for example, um, with autistic children, we may have we've dealt with some cases where children who um, are severely autistic have not made any progress whatsoever in the schools they are placed in, and there are some very good independent special schools, um, and the parents have wanted those independent special schools. They're going to need some independent educational psychologists to support that placement because if they go to tribunal and it's the parents against the local authority, um, it's going to prove difficult. But you're absolutely right, it's not an even it's not it's not it's not an even playing field. No, it's, it's not, not an even playing field at all. And it's made much worse by the changes to legal aid that were brought in in March two thousand and thirteen because until that date I say a large amount of our work and we could instruct independent experts, we could attend tribunals, we could pay for experts to attend the tribunals. And often a lot of the cases we dealt with under the leg were some of them more complex and more difficult in many ways. So are the councils aware of it? They're obviously yeah. aware of it. Yes. Oh, of course they are. That's why they you know, delay and do all the other things they do. They know that most parents will not take yeah. the tribunal, tribunal space because there's a financial implication. But what I would say is I think we would agree that the tribunal is slightly more sympathetic to a parent who is unrepresented. But before that, I think what we were talking about was challenging the local authority and going back to them. So, okay, so you have an educational psychology report which is not worth the paper it's written on, but you can't get an independent educational psychologist, then you need to be going back to the local authority psychologist and the local authority and asking them questions. And then if they don't answer them and don't provide the information, go to the tribunal during the appeal situation and ask them, ask them for an order to make the local authority do these things. Because otherwise you are, you are going to be stuck. But it's, um, and the problem is, in, in one of the issues is, is that the educational psychologists used by local authorities are employed by them. They're not independent, and they tow the party line. Um, there was an educational psychologist in an area I won't name, um, who clear. They're in a very difficult position because they're professionals. They spent a lot of time um, training and qualifying to be an educational psychologist, and then they're told by. Um, the local authority, they must put this or they can't put this in, the, in, in, in their report. And there was a certain educational psychologist who would meet with parents and say, oh, I think your child's severely dyslexic. And the parents would say, well, what, what do you think my, my child needs? And the educational psychologist said, well, I can't put him on a report 
that your child's severely dyslexic because I can't use the word dyslexic because the local authority don't recognise the word dyslexic and I can't use the word severe because local authorities don't like the word severe and I can't propose anything so the parent would say well what do you think I should do then and this educational psychologist employed by the local authority said well providing you don't tell anybody that I've said this and I would deny it if asked I suggest you go and see Beverly Watkins um, and so was recommending a huge number of parents to have a chat with me um, you know because they knew their hands were tied and I think um, one of the problems with the whole there's lots of problems with the SEN system and I could go on for, the, for, for hours or if not days on it is the problem with um, educational psychologist reports because if you if you are a parent that ever gets an independent one the, the difference between an independent no, the difference the, the, I, my son got an independent one at 14, so he got his extra GCSE time, went to Drogue College, and they said, we need another one, um, because it's different for college. So mm. two years mm. later, he got another one from the same assessor, so another £500, which said exactly the same thing to get his, to mm. get his in. And, and a lot of people say, why bother? Is it Exeter University is a £6,000 <coughs> a year at special education grant. Mm. So it has worked for us, and we didn't have to take it to appeal. Mm. And then he ended up getting himself to university because of the, the amazing support he got at Truro College. But I'm a psychologist, so I knew how to, to yeah, do the yeah, system yeah, yeah, yeah. and who to call. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean the, 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 um, the, the educational psychologist reports that some of the ones I've seen from the authorities are so awful, mm. so poor, yeah. it beggars belief. Yeah. Yeah. Really beggars for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, if you are going to, I mean, sometimes, you know, what, what, what hopefully, what was, you, you know, some of the things you may have picked up is that um, simply threatening to appeal or lodging an appeal, the local authority will give in. And uh, so, so d just simply taking those steps um, may be sufficient. It depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for um, an expensive placement. Um, which is going to cost the, lot of, the local authority a lot of money, then you may have more of a battle on your hands. Does Sendias help with this then? Does Sendias, they won't help with appeals with Sendias? They're meant to. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so is there, is there something in then, then supporting, uh, from the person, maybe for autism, supporting parents to, to work as a group together collectively to start to challenge these things. Is there, is there merit in that? I think that I think the, the, the there's merit in appealing, even if you as a parent mm -hmm. think I'm not sure if I can actually go through with the hearing. Because um, you can always withdraw. There's no, yeah. no and it, it takes it takes that focus from the local authority to think that you're going to appeal, and that's what local authorities do. Lots of local authorities, as Beverly was saying, have no intention of going to actually going through with the hearing, but will drag it out for months. So. Although, because what we don't want to do is kind of put you off from appealing, because if you don't, then you're not, your EHC plan's going to stay exactly the same as it is. Yeah. And, and what's then, the point of changing the SEN and going to practice if nobody's actually been challenged yet? Well, you know, there, 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 there's the increasing number of appeals. The, the, the appeals are on the increase. I mean, you were saying, how many appeals in Cornwall? Last year? Um, 19. 19. 19 actually lodged in Cornwall last year. Oh, really? Not tribunals, appeals. appeals. Yeah, it appeals to the tribunals. Oh, appeals to the tribunals. Yeah, no, they were the latest figures. Oh, okay. Well, it wasn't divided into, into yeah, it's categories. Not. It's just appeals to the tribunal service for SCM. Yeah. So yeah. if you, the tribunal service publish each year the um, the figures for the number of appeals per mm -hmm. local authority, mm -hmm. what, you will, what you will find is where, where there's a presence, where there's a legal presence, you have larger numbers of appeals. So there are larger numbers of appeals where we're based in Bristol and where we do work in certain local authorities and where other people are based because people then have access to that advice and information. Um, the only thing I would also say about the tribunal is there is the, because the tribunal is always changing and they're trying to streamline it further and the proposal, there is a proposal and I don't know if it's going through and I need to check because I didn't go to the latest meeting, but there's going to be a expert witnesses, so your educational psychologist, local authority and independent are going to be given guidance on how to write their reports because when you go to tribunal all your paperwork comes in and it's been decided that the bundles are too big so they're going to set a number of pages which means that people writing reports need to be clearer in their reports and the tribunal apparently and the idea being that they're going to be, the experts will be given specific questions to answer including 
quantify and specify. So I hear. So that might that might solve some of the problems, but it's kind of a watch this space, see what happens. It might be a pilot. I'm not sure, but um, it's uh, yeah. I think certainly about eight, was it 18 months ago they brought in the um, if it's an appeal against the refusal mm. to statutory says mm. it's only on the papers you don't ever attend. Um, has been very successful because um, mm. local authorities, you know, mm. give in so much of that. So that's that's one of the things that has been brought in. Um, so, and I think they are always, but but the appeals to the special needs tribunal are definitely on the increase. So more parents are appealing, mm. and in part that's because local authorities are being squeezed for money, and so they are they're not. Um, they're not um, making the provision they should and not drafting HCPs in the way that they should be drafted. <coughs> now, Health Watch, Health Watch Cornwall, they're, they're looking at after both health and social care, not education, but would this come under Health Watch as far as asking them to do an audit of parents that aren't getting satisfactory EHC plans so they can feed back to the local authority in Cornwall trying to do as a as an appeal on individual, but also a little like a little bit of a class action. You're health, saying, uh, health, uh, no, because it's, 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 health is not anything you can appeal against. So no, Health not, Watch, do you know yeah. Health Watch as yeah, but, and, but if they're not going to be involved in the EHC, and they're involved in social and social services as well, down here. I don't know if it will have any clout with the education no. department. I think is the issue. Yeah, because they don't cover education, but yeah. if it's local yeah. authority. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if it would, if it would, but yeah, if it would produce any actual actual results. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, I think maybe requesting more information from SEN from the local authority and the <coughs> of information about what's happening so you can find out about the number of appeals and the number of refusals and I just think keeping an eye on what's going on. I'm more, I'm more aware of the number of non-appeals because people feel so disempowered. So I think that that's skewed. I think it's like negative research. You know, these are the successful ones, but all the parents in this room who don't have the capacity, the financial capacity, the mental capacity to appeal even though they're not getting satisfactory education. Well, I wonder what that's like. And I think that's yeah. enormous. Well, I think I did, um, mm -hmm. I think I did just double check the figures because I thought it was interesting mm -hmm. to see. Um, just Cornwall currently has, uh, good old freedom of information, Cornwall currently has 2,471 young people with statements or EHC plans. So if you look at that number and you look that's at the number of people, yeah. So if you find me, but if you look at, but if you apparently, so there's an issue there already because mm -hmm. I'm sure the number should be greater. No, I'm doing it for children who have learning disabilities. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there's an issue there in terms of the number, but also if you look at that in comparison to the number of appeals that are going through, there are going to be many, many parents out there who have very unsatisfactory EHC plans. Yeah. Or yes, think, yeah. So yeah. there's there's a big there is it's a big problem with it. So you have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do the council or do you know the council because they get registered? It's a lot more than that. Yeah, I don't know, but it should be, if it's not on the website in terms of the Freedom of Information request, you can make that request and then they'll publish it on their website with the answer. That'd be worth doing. Because the, the numbers don't quite stack up in terms of the numbers. Mm -hmm. well, so mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stop there and just do a very short, brief mock tribunal.